I once went to South Africa, I ordered some products, I, I gave them out on credit, thinking that I'm starting a business, they had to just get some side income from uh, my work, but I found that nobody repaid my, my loans. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome to another episode of my life experiences. My name is Wezi Nyaniwa Sosola, your usual host, and as you can see today, I've got a very uh, exciting guest. She's my niece, Miss Memore. She's going to introduce herself. She's a university uh, final year student. So just tell us about yourself. What is it that you're doing at the university? Yeah, whatever you want to share with the viewer. Okay, thank you very much, Auntie. I am Memory Neo, as she has already said, and I'm at Tilongo University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Luana. I'm in my fourth year and doing agricultural economics. Wow, agricultural economics, that, that's a very interesting career, especially that in Malawi, where I'm inherently an agricultural economy. So we hope you are going to transform uh, the country at some point, just as you've heard that she's a student. Uh, today we just want to talk about all things school, all things education. We want to learn as a fourth year student, we want to learn from her experiences. The examination results for Form 4, this is a qualification which uh, qualifies you to go to the university, has just come out. So that's why we want to chat with her to get her experiences and also just to get some advices that she can give uh, to the new students that will probably qualify for university education. Now, memory. As a university student, you've come from afar. You were once a first year student. Just tell us from your experiences what have you learned? What could you have done better? Or what could you have improved on? What can somebody who is just coming in as a first year student learn from your experiences? I can say that I've learned a lot. I've learned reasons why good in, choosing good friends is very important. Like you talk of the people that you associate with, the hard work that you put in in your studies, mm -hmm. yes, things like those. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, during our orientation, we were taught things that we, we didn't understand. Mm -hmm. One of the lecturers I told us that there are people that can come to you, or maybe if you're bright, they can come to you for help. Mm -hmm. And if you want some help, the biggest that that can come to you, mm -hmm. and then in return, mm -hmm. they'll need something. Mm -hmm. Come come to my room mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. I will help you with maths. Because mm -hmm. in our first year, most of the time we have basic sciences. Mm -hmm. In return, mm -hmm. that person will need something. So, those are some of the things that are played. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so... Uh, those people, opposite sex or same sex, the ones who expect something in return. Opposite sex. Uh, especially what? the opposite yes. sex. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's right. There's nothing for free. If you are new and you want to go to university, just know that there is nothing for free. There is nothing for free. Everything has got a price. Even friendship, it's supposed to be mutual. You give and you are given back. That's what friendship is all about. So don't just think that you go to a boy's room, they will teach you maths or they teach you sciences or they come to your room. That's it's for free. Just know that there will be something, uh, an expectation in return, and you have to be um, expectant uh, about that. And you've, you've also talked about associations. Yeah, associations do matter in yes. any place. Yes. At the workplace, just as well as at school. And if you are coming from the secondary school education and you are now going to university, you need to work hard there, isn't it? Yes, you really need to work hard because every school has standards, just like at secondary school. So if you don't meet those standards, mm -hmm. you definitely go back to go back home. Mm -hmm. You'll be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At a school it's it's end of end of year exam that when you don't meet the standards, uh, it's two point zero. If you don't meet the two point zero GPA mm -hmm. then you go back home. Mm -hmm. You're withdrawn. Yeah. Yes. So you have to work hard, you have to be studying. Yeah, make sure that you walk around with people that that influence you positively. Mm -hmm. You talk of spiritually, manners, mm -hmm. academically. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to be looking at people who can help you with that. Yeah, um, really associations, they do matter. Friends, they do matter a lot. Just look at the background where you're coming from. You know, backgrounds, they are different. 
with different people. Others they are coming from affluent families, but others are coming from poor families. Look at somebody who's coming from an affluent family and you want to live like them. Just know that you are on the wrong track. Because if you are coming from a poor family, you need to be appreciative of the opportunity. Maybe you will be a conduit to transform the narrative in your family. You will be the first person maybe to be successful in your family. So don't just uh, get excited about what other people are doing. Maybe they are being drunk all the time. Uh, maybe they are partying all the time. And you want to associate yourself with such cliques and such groups that you are on the wrong track. Um, and now, later on, people will be looking forward to their university selections, college selections. Yeah, and if you are successful enough to go to the public um, universities or whatever college that you may opt for, be mindful of the friendships and associations uh, that you keep because you're coming from different homes, you are coming from different backgrounds and you'll be going back to different spaces. Um, at the university, parents, you talk of your relatives, your friends, expect more of you, like to be more mature, you know, mm -hmm. than how you were at secondary school. Yeah. So you just have to prepare yourselves. Mm -hmm. Everything that comes, mm -hmm. everything that the world gives you, mm -hmm. you have to prepare for it and receive it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so it's about maturity. You have to be mature. The way you act, even, it's not like you'll be regulated as you were at the secondary school. Now it's like a free life at the university. People, do, people are doing so, so many things at the university. So you have to be self-disciplined. Maturity comes with the discipline and responsibility and accountability. So you have to look at all that. No, just don't say that I'm, a, I'm still a teenager and I can do any, whatever I want. No, but as soon as you've gone to the university, you know, in Malawi, the situation is different because here people can stay with their parents in their 20, 20 years, 30 years. But like elsewhere, once you hit 18 years, you're out of your parents' house. As soon as you've gone to the university, you're an adult. Take yourself to be an adult and you have to mature uh, yourself. You have to develop responsibility and accountability in your manners, in your character, in your behavior, and in your, your attitude towards uh, your education. As the Form 4 results, um, the, the Form 4 is the uh, secondary school living uh, examinations. Yeah? That qualifies you to go to the either colleges or universities. The results are out in Malawi. Uh, what would you say uh, to, to the youth uh, who are just coming from secondary school? I would tell them. I would tell them that they should be prepared of everything that the world gives them. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you see that your points are not the ones that you wanted to get, yeah. say maybe you're having very big points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say that you can go back mm -hmm. and relate your form four examination. Yes, so just repeat. Yes, mm -hmm. just repeat form four. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. if you think that they're okay, I think proceed by to apply for public universities mm -hmm. or scholarships. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. there are a lot of public universities, and of course, if you're not selected to the public universities, you can also go to private institutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And also, you can also explore mm -hmm. to other options that they are around you. Mm -hmm. Yes, like technical colleges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so in Malawi, there are these universities uh, which are public, funded by the public fund funds. Um, they are the ones which are a hot cake. Um, and sometimes we used to think that they are the best quality, but we are now coming to the understanding that there are some other private investors that are coming out that are also uh, offering really uh, quality education. So you can look at um, all those options. If you've got money, uh, you can go to um, the private universities as well. And yeah, school is not all about going to the university. You can also explore uh, different colleges, as he has said, the technical colleges, or you can do certificates maybe in, in, in making hair salon and you open your own salon in the long run uh, foreman being a builder a bricklayer so there are so many things that you can do in life it's not only about going to the university and getting that higher qualifications and what i've noted also is that there are rich people that we have i think world at large there are some who have not even acquired college education or university education but they are very rich in life it's all about 
exploring and exploiting the opportunities that you've been presented with because we all cannot go to universities so whatever the result may come out for you um just be prepared that you've got alternatives you've got options yeah so on top of that just tell us what are the chances of one going to making it to a public university in malawi uh, for you to be considered okay for those that have very good points the chances are very high though it would also depend on the type of the course and the university that you've selected mm -hmm. yes so say for example someone who is very good at biology mm -hmm. Someone is very good in sciences, mm -hmm. but then that person wants to do languages at Mzuni. Mm -hmm. I think that wouldn't be the best option. Mm -hmm. Yes, someone with those good in those subjects, mm -hmm. definitely College of Medicine, mm -hmm. Kuhes, mm -hmm. KCN, yeah. And also, the choices that we make as we are selecting the courses. Yes, if you're good in languages, please go for a course. That's much into the top six good good points that you're having. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you're good in say sciences, mm -hmm. go for go for medicine. Mm -hmm. Be a doctor or something. Or maybe you can go for any sciences um um career. Yes. You can go be uh, go into nursing. You can go into maybe even engineering, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, because it's a science as well. So mm -hmm. look at the sciences depending on the uh, kind of how you've performed in your um, results. If you've performed well in, in the languages or in art, go for art at the universities. If you've performed well in sciences, because some other I, I had a friend actually I, I got this report. He was overall a very bright student, very bright. But he was blessed at science subjects. And when he went to the University of Malawi, he chose to do law. And wow, he was failing very bad. He was failing. I think he, he really got to that point of maybe uh, being withdrawn for the, from the university just because he had chosen um, a wrong um, course. Yeah, so you have to really to look at what am I very good at. You, you could be overall, you could be um, good in, in a wide range of subjects, but there are other subjects that you are a star in. So when you are choosing those um, you, you are options, just go for courses uh, that um, in tandem with the subjects uh, that you are uh, good at. Yeah, so for you, when you are going to Luana, Bilingual agriculture of agriculture and natural, Nat sciences. natural sciences okay resources okay. yes yeah so when you were going there you used another um yes route mm -hmm. can you tell us more about this route that you used okay so i didn't i didn't really know how i knew about luana city campus mm -hmm. but luana has three colleges i'd say mm -hmm. there's nrc which mostly offers diplomas which is the Natural Resources College. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then there is um, Bunda Campus, which is the main campus. Mm -hmm. And then we have City Campus, mm -hmm. where I'm currently at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, they, they release application forms. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know how I got to find one of the application forms, but mm -hmm. I ended up applying and was selected. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But how does one who's just come up, maybe is in the rural areas, maybe is in a hard to reach, but how do they come to know all these things? How do they come to know what opportunities are there out there about where to apply for? Because some, most of the people maybe may just be looking at getting to the public uh, invest of Malawi, which of which the selection is so limited. They have got, I think, about 8,000 something spaces in like the invest of Malawi. I don't know about Luana, but it's so limited. Okay, so limited spaces, and with the growth of the population of the country, not everyone can go to, to the University of Malawi. There are some other options, as, as we have already said. So how can somebody coming from the rural areas know these options? Is there a way maybe to learn about these opportunities? What can you do? Do you know? I think on, on that, I would say that there is information asymmetry mm -hmm. where um, most of the people, especially in the villages, mm -hmm. wouldn't know much about universities that are there, especially mm -hmm. pri private universities. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of course, maybe if you have a radio, mm -hmm. you'd get to hear one of the ad 
advertisements. Mm-hmm. Yes, like Unilia, they advertise. There's Catholic University, they also advertise. Mm. But for someone who doesn't even have a radio, I think that would be a challenge for him to know mm-hmm. that there's there's also this chance that I can go for. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. thanks so much. And now you've talked about you are going to um, the the city campus of the Luana. Oh, tell us more about the accommodation arrangements at the city campus. If somebody is supposing it's interested to come there, what are the accommodation arrangements there? Mm, of course, we have hostels. Mm-hmm. That's in campus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are hostels. There are also guest wings. There are houses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that people rent mm-hmm. and people rent out. Mm-hmm. So, um, if you go to the administration, mm-hmm. there's a list that they provide. Mm-hmm. Yes, they first of all show you their their hostels. Mm. After that, if you aren't satisfied with the hostels, mm. they also give you some options which are now guest guest wings mm. and also houses. Mm-hmm. There's a list of them mm-hmm. that you can you can get. Mm-hmm. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages of self boarding? Maybe finding a, a guest wing or a house. Uh, what are some for you? You are in a house, isn't it? Yes. What are some of the advantages if somebody is trying to make that decision? What can you say to them? I would say that it's not really recommendable because you have to be prepared to do everything on your own. Mm-hmm. You have to be managing everything. Mm-hmm. You also have to know how to live with landladies and landlords. Mm-hmm. Because people are just so different. Mm-hmm. The landladies will just be so different from your parents, from your moms. Mm-hmm. They'll be different. Mm-hmm. And if you're going for a, a house or a guest wing outside campus, I wouldn't really encourage you to because of, of safety issues, mm-hmm. security issues. Mm-hmm. Of course, there are some houses where there's high security, like the one I live at, there's security, of course. Mm-hmm. But... In most of the, in most cases, there are no security. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of, a lot of times from my friends mm-hmm. that my lab, my laptop was stolen, mm-hmm. my phone was stolen. I left my phone on bed, but then I didn't find it when I was back from class. Mm-hmm. So security issues also matters a lot outside. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for a hostel outside, you also want to consider that, mm-hmm. that where I'm going, is there security? Is there a fence? How strict is the landlady? How strict is the, is the landlord? Yeah. Yes. Uh, on advantage, I wouldn't say that advantage is really of living outside. Mm-hmm. Of course, maybe yeah, they are, but then there would be a few of them mm-hmm. where you get to have your personal space. space yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. In in hostels, in campus, I'd say there are these other hostels where um, there are eight people in one room. Mm-hmm. Yes, so you think of it, your friend is having, is having a friend over. Mm-hmm. Maybe that friend has also come with a friend. friend. And then you, the other one is also having a friend over. So I think you would be it that comfortable. It yes. becomes crowded and also maybe concentration, you want to study. Mm. And uh, yeah, so yeah, it's just a matter of weighing the options. And, and as I've said, um, do you choose who to share a room with? No, you don't. You don't have a choice. Yes, yeah. So don't. it's just about maturity, as I've said. Um, she has alluded to as well that immaturity, the way you handle issues, the associations that you make. J- just make sure that you are really focused in whatever you are doing. Otherwise, life at the colleges, life at the university, is different from life um, in secondary school. Because in secondary school, they do regulate. Like what time you study, what time you do this, what time you do that. But with you, there, there isn't much regulation of your, your, your study time. There isn't re- any regulations. You actually have to make that for yourself. Mm. Of course, in year one we had this course where we wrote about how to, to schedule our time, mm. how to do our timetable. Mm. Yes, but then you are not told that do this, memory, go study. Mm. Memory, this is now prep time, like how it is at secondary school. Mm. No, there isn't something like that. Mm. And also, um, as for our campus, the duration that the library is open is just very limited. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you have to create on time. Mm-hmm. That's after maybe five, after you have your supper, mm-hmm. you also have to create some time that you can study. You can study, yeah. Yes, time. so you really, because you really have to work hard, you really have to, to explore a lot mm-hmm. in the courses that you're having. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
So you also have to create a space out of that space that you have during the day to study as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But overall, what has been your experience like um, as a university student? So do you like it or would you have rather done something else? Um, would you do it again? Did you choose the right course for you or you would have rather chosen another course? Yeah. I think on the course, I think I chose the perfect one because I love it. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course, it was a bit hard, but I learned to adapt and how I can, I can always make sure that mm-hmm. I pass my exams. Mm-hmm. Yes. Also, the route that I chose, I think it's just okay. Mm-hmm. I've learned a lot. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. I've learned how I can live on my own. Yeah, I remember the the first weeks I wasn't myself. Mm-hmm. I would usually come to my auntie like now and again. Yeah, maybe almost in a month I'd come twice or three times mm-hmm. just because I wasn't feeling like I should be at school. Yeah, yes, but now. Mm-hmm. I think I'm there. Yeah, you're there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're a final year student now. Yeah, congratulations. You've worked so hard. Others, I know that they have been with the drone. So, yeah, this, congratulations to you. I think something that uh, other people also, who, viewers who are just uh, um, deciding on what to do next from the secondary school education can look at. Now, for you are now in your final year. You'll be graduating. You'll be going out into the world. Um... Then, what are your plans when you finish? Mm, I think, most of all, first of all, I'd be looking for a job. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as well, there's this organization that is, I think, in collaboration with the government. They are into farming and mega farms and also farm business. Mm -hmm. So I was also thinking that having the opportunity, I would apply for that. And if that if that would pass, I think I'd also go for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, wishing you all the best um, in your all your endeavors and when you are trying out all that, uh, your job applications and so on and so forth. Thank you. Yeah. But one one other advice that I want to give, especially to to school leavers, those are those those who are looking at finding a job or you can do business. You don't just, oh, only, always just look at uh, finding a job. You can be self-employed. As as we already alluded to, there are so many rich people who have not even made it to, to the university or to colleges. So it's just about you thinking, knowing what you are good at, and exploiting that. You can start your own business. Business is not always about trade, about buying products and selling. Like for me, um, I once went to South Africa. I ordered some products. I came back here in Malawi. Um, as the masses were doing at that time, I, I gave them out on credit, thinking that I'm starting a business. They had to just get some side income from uh, my work. But I found that nobody repaid my, my loans. <laughs> they went away with that. So a business, uh, that's when I knew that this trading, buying and selling of products is not really for me. So you have to know what you're good at. Um, and in so doing, you'd, you'd um, excel in life. The other thing that I would like to advise all school leavers is that don't be too proud. Of course, you have to hold yourself highly, but don't be like too proud to say that there are other things that you don't want to do. Whatever opportunity presents itself to you, whatever job you may be offered to you, whether it's a teacher, you can start with teaching. Maybe you are teaching agriculture, you are teaching other sciences, because your course is also a science, isn't it? Yes. So you can do that. You can start with teaching. You may say that, no, it's a low-paying job, but it could act as a launch pad for you. You know, sometimes God abases you for a purpose to later lift you up. Don't just think that the first time you look out for a job, you start here. No. The people who are here, most of them, they've stayed there for years. But you have to humble yourself when you are abased, as Paul says in the Bible, that he knows how to be abased. He also knows how to be held high. He knows all that. He's experienced all that. So it's part of life. You have to know if you are abased, look at that low life. Humble yourself. Submit to the people who are above you. Don't think that, okay, I'm coming from a rich family. I can't do this or I can't submit to this boss. No, but be able really train yourself 
to be submissive to the people in authority and also to do whatever job that has been presented to you, it, sometimes it may act as a launch pad to higher expo exploits. Ah. Uh, also, apart from being um, a launch pad, you are growing your social network, you are growing your capital uh, in terms of work. So the people that you meet are part of your network and they are the ones that may um, help you find the, uh, better opportunities in life. So don't just throw stones um, at those opportunities, um, be it small or big that you find. Whatever comes your, your, your way, accept it. Do it with all your, your might. Do it with all your ability. And later on, God shall uh, lift you up. Because it's part of training in life. Another thing, uh, whatever job you get, whatever income you get is better than nothing. If you are getting your 20,000 kwacha, you're getting your 200,000 kwacha, it's, it's better than nothing. Because if you don't have a job, you are just waiting for that higher paying job. In the meantime, you're still getting uh, pocket money from your parents. You are still uh, getting uh, money to buy um, underwears from your parents. Something of which you can do it yourself if you were to accept that low paying job. So it's like you are giving your parents a break. You are giving your parents a break. So just look forward to that. Something in your hands is better than nothing at all. Yeah, so reaching this point, guys, thank you so much. Um, for paying attention. I hope you've learned a thing or two about uh, options that are there. Uh, you want to explore higher education or maybe do other things um, after that. So thank you so much, Memore. It's been um, an insight, really. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank you so much. And all the best, uh, even as you'll be finalizing. We are ready, prepared for your graduation. <laughs> We are prepared to dance. We are prepared to get excited. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. And uh, all the best even as you are looking for jobs. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you so much. Stay blessed.